Today, we've got some exciting summer theme projects that are perfect for adding a touch of sunshine to your home. From vibrant decor to fun and functional DIYs, these crafts will bring the warmth and joy of summer into any space. Hi, my name is Katie from Lady Red Crafting. Let's get started with these delightful summer creations. So I was browsing Hobby Lobby the other day and I found this Welcome Friends cutout in their wood cutout section. And I thought this would make a beautiful sign. So we're gonna start out by painting this with our Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss. And I was pleasantly surprised on how nice this wood cutout was from Hobby Lobby. It was very thick and had a nice wood char on the outside of the letters, making it really easy just to paint the top of the letters. So while that's drying, I'm going to grab this fun blank sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. And I was very impressed with the quality of the sign from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take one of the strings out of the sign and let that hang out. Next, I grabbed a handful of beads and just put them inside a little plastic bowl here. And we added some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And just a little bit will go a long way added some water and took my little paintbrush and just stirred those up. And once those are completely coated, I put on a disposable glove and picked them out of the bowl and laid them out to dry. And I just laid them out on a paper towel because I felt that would be easy to help absorb any of that extra paint. Once the beads are dry, I take the beads and I'm going to go ahead and just string them on the hook for the sign. Let's put everything together. I'm going to take the welcome friend sign and position it on the frame of the sign and we're going to have that elevated right there. So by doing this, I needed to know exactly where to put my glue. So I'm taking a pencil and I'm just going to mark on the frame where the welcome friends hits that frame. And this will make it a lot easier to know where to place our glue when we're ready to glue this together. So the glue that I'm going to use is some wood glue that I have from the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to use a little bit of hot glue. Suggest having some clamps or some clips also, so that way you're able to not have to sit there and hold the sign for too long because the wood glue does take a little while for it to dry. So I'm using just the basic pink clips from the Dollar Tree, but you can also use clamps or if you need to, you could just set a book on top just to make sure everything stays into place. Now while that's drying, let's make some embellishments. I'm starting out by making a bow here and I'm using some ribbon that I got from the fabric store. So to make the double bow, I'm just looping around the bow piece twice on either side. And I don't want a very long tail on this so you can see that I'm using a very short tail. And for attaching the center, we're using a pipe cleaner. I find that works out really good. It's only about a third of a piece of a pipe cleaner, so it's perfect size. And now I'm just grabbing my scissors and I'll just do a quick dovetail on those tails. Now all that's left is to cover up that pipe cleaner. So I fold a little piece of ribbon into thirds and I hot glue that around the center. And of course we do a quick little fluff and adjustment and this bow is complete. Now let's move back to our sign and remove our clips. And now let's put some flowers on this sign. And what I'm going to use here is a lavender stem that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I actually ended up using two of these, but I didn't use the full piece on the second one because I wanted three little purple pieces going on either side and one stem comes with five. So it did leave me with a little bit of leftover for me to do for another project. And to attach these lavender pieces, I'm just going to go ahead and use some hot glue and attach them to the center piece of this sign. 
And don't worry about it having an opening on the center there because this is gonna leave a perfect spot for that bow we just made. And wow, I really like how this sign turns out. It's one of those simple signs that just, it gives so much dimension and so cute. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm loving all of these wood boxes Dollar Tree has in the Crafter Square section. To start out, I'm going to stain this box using my Waverly Antique Wax. Next, I'll grab my Waverly Plaster Paint and we're just going to dry brush around the box just to give it a distressed whitewashed look. Now, once everything is dry, I do come in with my zip sander and I just sand any little rough edges little bit of fuzz there from the baby wipes when I stained everything. So I just wanted to make sure it was nice and smooth. Once that is complete, I take my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel and I seal my box. Once everything has dried, I grab my Fragment Effects Glass Chip Binder and Sealer. And this stuff is what you use at the bottom of the tray before we put our glass chips in. So the directions say to spread a thin layer on the surface before applying the chips. Add the chips while this glue is still wet. So I want to coat the whole bottom with these fun chips. I'm starting out with the turquoise color and then I'm going to add a little bit of the green glass chips and this is a darker green and then I'm also going to use the clear glass chips. So I'm using all three of these colors. While we're adding these chips, I want to tell you all about this exciting playlist I'm a part of. Summer Ain't Over, a Can't Sleep Creation collaboration, hosted by Jody at Southern Seasons, Dawn at Shabby Meets Bling, and Up All Night DIY Decor with Monica. This late night playlist is linked in my description box below. Please check them out and let them know that I sent you over and give them some love. Thank you. Now, once you're satisfied with laying down all of your chips, we're gonna go back to that fragment effect, glass chip binder and sealer. And I'm just going to pour a little bit over the top until I lightly coat what I have there. I'm not putting a lot on because it says not to use a lot, but I'm just using a little bit. It does say that we need to let it dry for 24 hours. So we will wait until the next day and see what happens. And this sticks amazing. At first I was a little nervous because it was so thin. But as you can see here, everything sticks down nicely. I wanna be able to put stuff into this dish. I didn't want anybody to get hurt with those glass beads in there. So I am going to go ahead and pour some resin over the top. This resin I did get at the Dollar Tree. I am going to mix part A and part B, a one to one ratio, just like it says on the package. And I'm going to use the whole bottle for both of these because I wanna make sure I get a nice coat over the top of these glass beads. I made up about two ounces of resin and I poured this over the top and it covered most of the beads. There were one or two that did poke out a little bit but I didn't have any additional resin at the house. So in the future, I would have done three ounces of resin if I were to recreate this project. And the other thing that I did notice with this resin, it took about two hours for it to completely dry. So once it was completely dry, I did grab out some fun beads and I'm gonna add them to the bottom of our little tray here to make it a riser. And since these beads were already painted black, this makes it really easy. I just take my hot glue and after flipping over the little tray, I just add these four little beads to each corner of the square. Now once that has dried, we can flip this over and see our beautiful little riser. I love how this turns out. The resin turned out amazing. That was really easy to use and these glass beads were a lot of fun using. So please check them out. I'll have them linked in my description box below. 
and let me know what you think. Would you try this? How would you use those glass beads? This little mushroom napkin I found at TJ Maxx and I thought they were really cute. I'm not a huge mushroom fan, but this was a really fun napkin. What I'm doing here is I'm just removing those back two layers of the napkin because I just want that top piece. And this little journal I found at the Dollar Tree and what I'm going to do is we're gonna make this journal over. So I'm gonna start out by grabbing some painter's tape and we're going to cover up the binder on this journal. And I want a nice crisp line because this is where I'm going to do my decoupage. Now, once we have our tape laid down, I grab my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and we're going to coat that side of the journal. And before the paint completely dries, I do remove that painter's tape. And then I set this aside to dry and we're going to repeat the same steps on the back side of this journal. Now that we have the front and the back of the journal painted, let's grab our Mod Podge. I am using matte Mod Podge for this. I'm gonna go back to the cover of this journal. And we're just going to paint a nice coat of the Mod Podge over the top of that Waverly chalk paint. And then we'll let that completely dry. Now I'm gonna grab my napkin and this is just that top layer and we're gonna line that up with the line on the journal. And once I have that position the way that I would like it, I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper and layer that over the top. Next, I'm using my hot iron and we're just going to iron that napkin onto the Mod Podge and this will allow for everything to adhere and take any wrinkles out. And we just removed that piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna grab my zip sander and I'm just gonna sand down lightly to remove the remainder of the napkin. Now let's flip over our journal and repeat all of the same steps. And now that both sides have been decoupaged, I am gonna take my Mod Podge again and do a coat over the top of the napkin to seal everything in. This gives it a little bit of protection as well. You could completely stop here, but I am gonna go a little bit further and I'm taking some of this decorative gold tape and I'm going to do the edges around the cover. Now let's just say I went a little bit overboard with the gold tape, but I still think it looks nice. You may want to go less is more, but I went a lot more. Now I'm going to grab my garden journal sticker that I created from my Cricut Joy and I'm just going to put that right on the cover of our journal. for a few final touches, I'm gonna open up this journal to the very back of the journal. And what I wanna do here is I wanna add a bookmark to the journal. So I'm using some satin ribbon and I'm putting it like shiny side down. And so you see the matted side at the top and we're gonna go up toward away from the journal. And then we're just gonna hot glue that down on the back cover. And once that hot glue is there, I do add a little bit more of that gold tape just to make sure that that bookmark stays into place. And then what you can do is now that bookmark will fold down and it'll be nice and shiny and pretty. And you could put that inside your journal. And then I'm just gonna cut a little bit of that ribbon off because I didn't need it quite so long. Next, I grab my Mod Podge and I'm going to just go ahead and do a light coat over the top of that sticker that I created that says garden journal just to make sure that nothing peels off. That's all there is to it. Now our custom journal is ready to use. I think this turns out so darling. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Here's a fun little craft that you can do. And this one you could also do with children. So this is just one of those easy little crafts. So I'm taking one of these wood slicers and then I'm just gonna tape that down to a paintable surface. And I'm painting it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. 
And I'm only painting the top of this and around the outside rim and I'm just kind of lightly dusting the outside because I wanted some of that wood to show through. Next I grabbed my Burnt Umber Apple Barrel Paint and I put a cork on top of a skewer and I keep these skewers in my craft room and so you can see that they're well used, lots of different paint colors on there, but they do great for holding different things. So I'm only sticking that in about a quarter of an inch, just enough so that I can paint this without the cork falling off. And I found that it did take me two coats to cover this completely, but you do you and whatever works for you. One of the great things with having these on a skewer, it makes it really easy to have them dry. I just stick them into a vase and then I just let them air dry. Now going back to our wood slice, I'm putting this down on just a regular piece of copy paper and I'm adding a little bit of my glossy Mod Podge to the top. And I'm gonna just paint that Mod Podge all over the top of this wood slice and around the edges. And next I take some glitter out of my stash and I'm just going to lightly dust over the top of this wood slice. And then I'm gonna continue doing this until it's completely coated on the top and then around the sides. Now, once you're satisfied with your glitter coverage, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge again in glossy and you'll notice here that I put a little bit onto the piece of paper and that's because I don't want my brush going in and out of the Mod Podge container since I'm gonna be painting this over the glitter and we don't need glitter in our Mod Podge. We're just gonna take this glossy Mod Podge and it will allow the sparkle to stay, but we'll make sure that the glitter doesn't go everywhere all over your house. And now that everything is all dry, we're gonna put these two items together. I'm going to use Fix All Adhesive. It's a super glue product that I find at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just adding that to the bottom of our wood slice. Next, I'm gonna take the cork and we're going to make sure that we cover up the hole that we poked into it. So I just used that side and I put that to the bottom of our wood slice. Now let's flip this over and look at our little mushroom. I think this is so cute. This could go on a tiered tray. You could put it inside in some potted plants and just have little mushrooms coming out. And another fun idea would be to use terrazzo flakes instead of the glitter. And there you have it, four beautiful summer projects. I hope you enjoyed these crafts as much as I did. And if you're looking for more fun and creative craft ideas, be sure to check out the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, craft more, stress less. <laughs>